brought you here, Mr. Osborne. Well, uh, I'm passing through America on my way home to Australia after a visit to West Africa to represent the Australian government at the Ghana celebration. Uh, you know, our government sent three aircraft, three Neptune aircraft of the Royal Australian Air Force to represent the Australian services there, and I elected to travel in the aircraft, and we're now on our way home. What are the most vivid impressions that you have from the Ghana celebration? Uh, well, I, I think the most vivid impressions I have are of the colorful and dignified ceremonies of the, uh, in, which introduced the new dominion into the community of nations, of the celebrations of the ceremonies in the Parliament House, and of the uh, tribal, uh, traditional tribal welcomes to Her Royal Highness the Duchess of Kent, who represented the Queen at the celebration. Um, I think also uh, I have a very strong impression of a, a new dominion, very firmly a member of the British Commonwealth. The people of Ghana, the government of Ghana, has decided quite firmly to remain within the British Commonwealth. They have recognized the Queen as their sovereign, and so they are in all respects in exactly the same constitutional status as we Australians are. What have you done in the United States? Uh, well, I've had a very interesting time here. I've had conversations with Mr. Qualls, the Secretary of the Air Force, and with General Twining, the Chief of the Air, of Air Staff, and with a number of his uh, leading staff officers. Uh, at General Twining's suggestion also, and um, by arrangements which he very kindly made for me, I've visited several operational bases of the United States Air Force and uh, have gained the most valuable information uh, from that, which will be of great help to me in my work at home. What are the highlights of your visit to the United States? Well. I would say the, uh, the uh, strongest impression that I've gained here on this visit is of the tremendous strength and the scope of the activities of the United States Air Force. You have to see something of them at work to realize the immensity and the scope and the power of, of uh, military aviation in the United States and indeed in other parts of the world as we saw it uh, in some bases in Africa. Uh, you have to see these things to uh, understand their immensity. Have you any lasting impressions of the, the people's attitude in the United States, uh, particularly toward uh, Australia? Well, yes, I have. I, uh, I've had confirmed again that uh, the sense of friendliness uh, to Australia and to any travelling Australian in the United States. There's a great kinship between the people of the United States and, and Australians, and I've been made to feel uh, a, a, a very welcome visitor in this country and have been received wherever I went with very great kindness and with great help. I understand that you have flown uh, in one of the supersonic aircraft that you have conferred with Convair, Lockheed, and will confer with Douglas and uh, North American people prior to your return to, uh, to Australia. Uh, have you anything that you would like to say in connection with the American aircraft industry? Uh, well, I've seen some very remarkable aircraft since I came here. The, uh, the Lockheed C-130 transport is a most uh, versatile aircraft. It can do almost uh, everything that's required of a military transport aircraft. Um, I've seen, uh, well, I had, of course, the thrilling experience of flying faster than the speed of sound uh, in a Convair uh, all-weather fighter, um, and uh, in a two-seater model of the Convair all-weather fighter. And uh, I've seen the, um, the very new uh, Lockheed F-104 aircraft, and I'm going to see some other uh, modern aircraft before I go. One gets the impression that the aircraft industry in this country is never uh, satisfied with any single achievement, but is always uh, looking ahead for new uh, boundaries to cross, the new uh, achievements to uh, realize. Thank you, Mr. Osborne.